Being efficient can help you make more money. Being efficient can help you save time. Being efficient can make sure that you get home at the end of the week without running out of time on your clock. What's up guys, Erudite Trucker here, back with another video. And today, I wanted to talk about efficiency. One of the easiest ways that you can remain efficient or bring up your efficiency level, especially for us flatbedders, is by making sure that you have a properly organized headache rack. For us flatbedders, the headache rack especially an enclosed one like this, is something that we go in and out of at least once a day to secure whatever load we have on the trailer at the time. Having an organized headache rack will enable you to get out whatever specific piece of securement that you need to properly secure whatever load is on your trailer. Not wasting time searching for a securement piece will save you minutes, which add up to hours over the course of your week or your month. I've seen a lot of guys' headache racks that look like bird's nests when they open those doors up, and I don't know how they find anything. <laughs> but I'm gonna show you guys how I set my headache rack up for maximum efficiency. All right, guys, as you can see, I have an enclosed headache rack behind me, and it has three chambers. Pretty self-explanatory, one behind the driver's side, one behind the passenger side seats, and one in the center. Pretty spacious, as you guys can see, but where's all the securement? <laughs> all the securement that you guys are gonna be holding. You can see my two tarps here. Got another tarp on the driver's side, but let me show you guys something. We still have to make all of this fit within these three chambers. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. It's not gonna be nearly as daunting as it looks. <laughs> this is a lot of stuff though. I don't know how many bungees those are. 10 chains, 10 chain binders. Uh, about eight two-inch straps, winch bar, uh, two-inch ratchets, coil racks, ten of them, plastic and metal edge protectors. It's a lot, but I'm going to show you guys section by section how you can easily make all this stuff fit and make sure that you have no difficulty finding any piece of this that you want at any given time. Okay, I'm gonna work my way from the passenger side over to the driver's side. So the first thing that I would do and that I always do when I need to, uh, say, recover a new truck and I'm basically starting from scratch with whatever securement and condition was left over by the previous driver, I always start off with my two-inch ratchets and there is three shelves or hook hangs that I put these on. And I'll show you guys a close up of how that looks uh, once everything is put aside. It'll look a lot better that way. But I just hang these up on the bottom row. Uh, you can usually hold about four or five of these on the bottom row. Slide them right over, no problem. All right, see how that hangs right there, just on this shelf. Now I have a couple more, but they're on the load that I'm hauling right now. So you put these in first and then we're gonna go ahead and move over to our chains. Now the chains, there's a secret, <laughs> secret tactic to hanging up the chains that will help them take up a lot less space. Cause these things are long. I don't know how many feet long the chains are, but the first thing you wanna do is when you get one hook of your chain, grab the ending hook and hook it on to the top link and then we're going to do something else but that's going to help eliminate a lot of the chain length that would otherwise be hanging down at slack now 
Now, you want to take that half or the chain length and grab it down in the middle, half of it there. And if you can get your hands on some of these, these S hooks, J hooks, whatever they're called, I seem to always find these just lying on the ground at uh, shippers or consignees. I don't know if they come off of people's bungees or wherever they're from, but these are perfect for the uh, little trick that I do. You take that half or that ending length of the chain right in the center of it, take a J hook, hook it right through the end of that, and then you hook this to the upper level of the chain that you already have hanging in the rack. Now, what you've effectively done, you've cut down the length of that long chain down to a fourth of the length that it would take. Hooked to itself, then with the J hook, with the half, and then you take what's left over and just shove it in the back there. That way you don't have a huge mess of chain length all over the place getting tangled up in chains next to it. I mean, when you grab this, you'll grab the whole chain out in one bit. And you can take your whole chain out and drag it to wherever you need to go secure. Much, much easier. And you do that with all 10 chains. Be on the lookout for those J hooks. Like I said, I don't know if they're coming from people's old bungees that they throw on the ground, they just discard them or, or what they come from, but they're plentiful. I mean, I've never purchased any of these. All the ones that I have, have been found on the ground. But let me go ahead and uh, hang up the rest of these chains and we'll move on to the next piece of securement. Now what I always do, I always just put five chains on the bottom row and I put the last five chains on the top row just above it. Looking at that, nice and compact, or as compact as you can get it. <laughs> and there's not a whole bunch of chains all over the place. Everything's connected. None of these chains are gonna get intertwined with the chains next to it. And you will be able to snatch out any single one of those chains without having it be choked up by the chains next to it. All right, the next piece that you wanna grab is gonna be your chain binder. And a pro tip with these chain binders, make sure that you always have the hooks completely retracted into the base and uh, give them that last little hard twist to make sure that they don't unwind. Because if you don't have them completely sucked in, say, uh, if I can get it here, there we go. If you have it loose like this, the vibration of you driving down the road, if you have this end pointing down, the loose end, it will gradually unwind itself and you'll find the hook has fallen all the way out of the base and is lying on the floor of your headache rack. And it's really annoying to have to re-screw that in right at the moment when you're planning on using it. So just keep them tightly wound into the base whenever they're not in use. Save yourself wasted time having to screw them back in. But we hook those starting from the far end on the first uh, level, just like we did with the chains. But like I said, on the far end of the rack. And also make sure that you're lubricating these things from time to time, you know, putting a little bit of, uh, uh, some guys use motor oil and some guys use uh, like PVC or PB blaster and we'll spray it here on the, uh, uh, the hooks. You'll unreel them, have them all the way extended, spray some there, spray some in the gear. And it'll make sure that these don't seize up on you when you're trying to, uh, to wind them up on a chain, especially in the winter time or if they've been rained on a few times and you haven't been properly lubricating them beforehand. There we go. And here, 
get it up close for that for you guys. As you can see, let's make things a little bit brighter for you. And there's two layers, just like with the chains. You have uh, my first five chain binders in the back, the last five over top. And there's a little bit of space between the chain binders and the chains. And now if you don't push these levers to the side, they'll like stick out just like that and you'll try to close your headache rack door and you won't be able to close it all the way because that's sticking out in the way. So you might wanna try to push them over to the side and that's another reason why you wanna be organized so you have the space to push them over like that. You don't have anything sitting in the way blocking you from being able to close this headache rack door. We're already putting a dent in all that stuff that I showed you guys. The middle's cleared out. Let's keep going. Okay, we're pretty much, or very nearly finished with uh, the passenger's high headache rack. The last thing that I really put over there is just my bungees. And like I said, this is just a bunch of bungees that I've had on the trailer for a while or collected from, you know, trailer swaps or, or whatever, bungees lying on the ground, or sometimes guys will leave excess equipment in their belly pans. You might find it at a clutch moment right when you're needing something that you're short on. I know I have, but I just hang them, hang them right in the headache rack there or right on the, uh, the lip of this shelf. Easy peasy. Show you guys the finished end of that. Just hang the bungees right there. And uh, it helps to, you know, consolidate as many of them as you can. I like to do two groups. Usually I can get most of my loads fully covered with just one and maybe a few from the second group of bungees, but you can never have, well, yeah, you can, <laughs> but you always wanna have a, a few extra bungees because these things do wear out over time. They dry rot, you know, they get too much stretch, they crack and fray, and you don't wanna pull on a crack and frayed bungee because it'll snap. You could hit yourself in the face or you could fall backwards if you're pulling too much, putting too much of your weight behind that pull, which you do not wanna do. But let's go ahead and move on to the other headache racks, get rid of the rest of this stuff. The next thing that I'm gonna grab is going to be the edge protectors. Just because I have them sitting here on the edge of the trailer and I don't want them falling off with me trying to grab some of this other stuff. I like to keep all my edge protectors on this top shelf on the driver's side headache rack. And I like to put my metal edge protectors in first up against the wall on the far left-hand side. I like to do it, I mean, if I found that they stay in place better when you put the short end, you can see the, this side here is longer than this side. I put the short end up against the wall and I stack them all that same way. One on top of the other. I don't know why, but it seems to be if I stack them the other way, the vibration of driving down the road, you know, just somehow they find a way to move and come off top of each other somehow. Every time it's super annoying if I don't stack them this way. And the tighter that you keep things in your headache rack, the less that they'll move around. So I like to try to put things right up against each other, butt it up if I can. So then, plastic edge protectors. And I have way more of those than I do probably any other piece of securement on this truck, just because the loads that usually do require these usually need a lot. Whether it's shingles or insulation, having to have all those straps on it that need to have a piece of protection underneath that strap to avoid the load claim. So I usually make three stacks of these plastic edge protectors and I just stack them up to the ceiling <laughs> if I have that many. Believe it or not guys, I've come close. I've come close to using almost all of these on one load before. It's a load of rebar that I needed to use chains and straps on. A lot of straps. <laughs> Sheesh. Super easy. You just want to put them right over top of each other. All right. And usually to keep these in place, because sometimes these will walk forward on you, like they're trying to come backwards out of the rack. You know, if you hit your brakes or just the vibration makes them do it, I'll take like a few and I'll just put them as like a a bulkhead, <laughs> if you will, in front of the other ones to keep them in place. But that's set, get your winch bar. I like to keep my winch bar on that side as well. No particular reason. I did not take the tarps out of this headache rack because I did not want to have to fight with them and try to make them fit in the headache rack again, especially 
the two that are in the center right here. But that's where I keep my tarps. I usually keep one lumber tarp on the driver's side. I'll keep a dry, um, excuse me, a lumber tarp and a steel tarp in the middle. And I'll keep my final steel tarp back there, the trailer side box. And I'll show you what other securement I have in there as well. It's not a whole lot. That does it for the driver's side rack. And we'll give you guys a close up winch bar, lumber tarp, plastic, and metal edge protectors. Now we're dwindling down. We're down to the home stretch. Just got coil racks, two inch straps, and then we can move on to the back. But as you can see, all of that stuff when put into the rack in an organized fashion does not really take up all that much space if you do it the right way. Starting to lose a little bit of daylight, guys. <laughs> it's the evening time. I think we can knock it out before it gets completely dark out here. The center rack, as you can see, my two tarps that I told you guys about before. In this top rack here is where I keep my coil racks. But there's a specific way that you need to put them in there to make them fit properly and also provide you with easy access to taking them out and putting them back in if you don't have to use all of them for a particular load that you're hauling. I always start by putting two of them side by side in the rack, sliding them from the center to the passenger side, the end of the rack there. And then the next layer, we'll put them face down so they fit on top of the layer that we just put in, like a, a row of teeth, as you can see ends that are sticking up here, the, uh, the mountain peak parts will fit in just perfectly. And like I said, I have 10 of these, so a set of five. And we just keep doing that until we have them all in there, layer on top of layer, fitting, fitting them each over top of each other, same way. All right, now, if you do not secure those coil racks, driving around, if you just leave them placed in there the way that I showed you, the vibration of you driving the truck will make those come off center and they'll fall, you know, they'll kind of fall to the side or fall back, you know, they'll come off of uh, that uh, lock-in that I showed you guys fitting the teeth together. So what I do, I take a bungee and I tie those around through the bottom layer over top and I just hook it to itself and I'll show you what that got what that looks like uh, once I go ahead and strap mine you don't want to watch me <laughs> fight with that potentially as you can see there's that formation I was telling you guys about one layer on top of the other the teeth fit together just right that'll help to prevent it from moving too much and just to seal that in lock it in I should say just a bungee wrapped underneath uh, the second layer hooked onto itself over the top and that will sit perfectly. And the last thing that we got left is these two inch straps. And you always wanna make sure that you roll, roll your straps up when you're done using them. I've seen guys that, you know, they, you know, for one reason or another, you know, they're tired or they don't wanna mess with their strap winder, the handheld crank one. <laughs> if you have a, a strap winder, an electric one like mine, I'll put a link to my video where you can see my review of one around here somewhere. You don't have to worry about that. You'll never be tired of rolling up straps because you're not putting any effort together. All you're doing is pulling a trigger on a drill <laughs> to take care of that. But I take my two inch straps and I just slide them actually back. I'll slide a few of them back behind here. And then we'll just take those and we'll pile them on top of each other. There we go. You can see that one back there. And I'll just fill up fill up the bottom row here. I mean, it's super easy. I mean, this stuff with setting your headache rack up like this, you only have to do it this one time. Once you've done it, well, as long as you're in the same truck. If you have to go recover another truck, odds are 10 out of 10 times, the person you, or the truck you recover is not gonna be set up as well as this. I've had, in my time with TMC, I wanna say five trucks, yeah, five different trucks. They have never been in <laughs> as meticulous 
of a condition as I keep the trucks that I'm personally assigned to. I always have to go through and set the truck up or the headache rack up myself this way. That's one of the reasons why I hate having to recover a new truck so much. Having to go through the efforts of doing this, I mean, let alone hoping that, hoping that the new truck you get assigned to has the right amount of securement in it. I've had to pick up trucks before that did not have stuff like, didn't have tarps in them, didn't have a winch bar. Luckily, I keep my own. You guys have probably seen it in my other video, my ratcheting winch bar. That's something that I purchased myself. It's not provided by the company. And uh, I haven't done a review on that actually. Maybe I will, but highly, highly, highly recommend that you keep a ratcheting winch bar. It saves you a lot of time or it can, especially when you're dealing with soft loads like uh, shingles, insulation, things that you don't want to crank on, drum tight, you know, drywall. Here we are guys, everything that I had out before is put away. Don't include the stuff that's on the load already, but all that stuff would fit in the areas that I've already shown you. Now, there are some things I haven't showed you yet where I keep them. My four inch straps, I didn't show you where I keep those yet. I'll get to that. For the final review, you got all your edge protectors, one lumber tarp, winch bar, lumber tarp, steel tarp. And depending on how you roll those up, they may or not, may not fit. In the winter time, when they're cold and they don't want to compress, all I'll say is good luck trying to make those fit two tarps, one next to the other. You can always make a single tarp fit in here, even if it's really fat from the cold that won't roll up. But sometimes you may not be able to make two tarps fit right next to each other. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you what else to do to try to make them fit or to where else to put them. <laughs> but uh, if you know, you know, if you've seen guys do it, you know where else tarps can go sometimes or where guys put them, I should say. Here's the other end here. All of our chains, chain binders, bungees, coil racks there. And uh, you know what the heck with it, I'll tell you guys here. Sometimes you might see guys put their tarps up here now the company TMC does not want you to do that. And if you're not a TMC driver, I don't know how your company might feel about it, but TMC doesn't want you to do that because that is a theft hazard. Now I know, you know, sometimes guys will do it. If you're going to, you know, like you just use those tarps on whatever load and the next load that you just got dispatched on has you using those same lumber tarps or steel tarps at that point in time, it might not matter much, but try to avoid putting your tarps up here and strapping them down. Cause like I said, it's a, it's a theft hazard. You know, especially if you're going to go somewhere and sleep overnight in a truck stop and for darn sure if you're going to do a 34 hour reset or go on vacation, never leave your tarps strapped to the deck of your trailer because all somebody has to do is come by with a knife or whatever and cut your strap and your tarp is gone. And you may be put on the hook by the company for the cost of replacing that tarp. And you want to keep your money in your pocket. You don't want to give it up for anything like that. This is the best place for it to go, for them to go. Let's get to the other stuff before I forget about it. Okay guys, now the four inch straps, I keep all of my four inch straps right here in my foot box. Nice and rolled up. You can fit a ton of them in there. I wanna say TMC sends you out with a standard quantity of 16. It's more than likely that, uh, you know, as you're working, Especially if you're doing trailer swaps. I mean, a lot of times, like I said, guys leave stuff in the, the belly pans for one reason or another, I don't know, but you'll probably find extra straps along the way. 16 makes sense. I mean, you always wanna have a few extra in case, you know, a strap or two tears, especially if you're hauling something like uh, wire mesh, you're guaranteed to get some punctures or tears in your strap hauling that stuff. You always wanna keep more than the standard quantity of uh, four inch straps on your truck and maybe a couple extra two inch straps. Like I said, just in case you need to replace one. But the reason why they give you 16 is because there's on the trailers, there's a standard quantity of eight winches on each side. So that means you have a single strap for each winch on both sides of your trailer. But like I said, always have at least a couple extra, maybe three, maybe four, just in case you need to replace one. But going over here, that's where I keep the last bit of my stuff. The last steel tarp, my hazmat placards, 
and a couple of padded tarps that you'll need for, you know, protecting your main tarp from getting torn by metal loads or if you have a load of plastic pipe you need to cover up the end that's on your smokestack side which would be the passenger side of the truck so that you don't get a damage claim from having soot on your pipe that you're hauling that's pretty much it guys as far as where i keep everything i mean it's super easy i mean this i got space to spare but i don't really keep too much in here i try to keep as little as possible in the trailer side box just because when I have to do a trailer swap, you have to grab all of this stuff out, you know, transport it over to the trailer that you're swapping, in addition to uh, <laughs> the dunnage, but we all know where that goes, just uh, under there. Also, I forgot, I have my coil, my coil mats are back here, you can see them. Now, when it comes to your coil mats, let me show you something back at the headache rack here. You wanna make sure that you are not putting your coil racks on top of the cab guard, okay? The cab guard, AKA, you know, your headache rack, you know, it's supposed to guard the truck, you know, if your, your load slides forward and hits that to try to stop it from uh, going through into the truck and injuring you or a passenger that you might have or your co-driver that's in the bunk, it's not going to be very effective, trust me. This is not as strong as you may think at stopping anything. Your bulkhead that you build back here is going to be what's going to save you. But I've seen guys put their coil mats up here and they'll strap them down with like the bungees or something. Don't do that. Once again, that's a theft hazard or your bungee could tear and you're going to lose your coil mats. They're going to be off on the highway somewhere and you'll lose them. And I even talked to a guy, he wasn't, he wasn't a TMC guy, he was from another company, but he told me that he got put out of service by a DOT officer because he had his coil mats up here. I never heard of that happening to anybody before, but why run the risk? If you got that in there, even if you don't, just don't put anything up here to store. And uh, the other thing I've seen guys doing, try to avoid that as well. Guys will take their bungees, that I've seen <laughs> and uh, do something like this. You know, they'll have their bungees hooked here and tied up really tight so that they're hanging right there. Like, don't do that either, guys. I mean, what's stopping anybody from just, you know, at nighttime when you're sleeping, just grabbing these and taking off with them? I mean, I know they're just bungees, but Depending on where you are, where you got your truck parked, I mean, I wouldn't put it past some people to just yank whatever is out and exposed. All right, guys, we've lost the light now, but I've shown you how to properly set up your headache rack. It doesn't take very long. It's super worth it. It saves you a ton of time trying to find things like I said I've seen guys with birds nests and they're searching dragging a bunch of stuff out that they're not even planning on using on their load but they got to move it out of the way to get to something else just do it this way super easy save you a ton of time and uh if you've seen this video you've got no excuse not to do it now I've shown you exactly where to put everything how easy it is should be no question <laughs> but I appreciate you guys watching I appreciate everybody who likes comments and subscribes shares the video spread this information further and help the channel grow to help other people learn how to have an easier time out here trucking, flatbedding, whatever you're doing, or if you're just interested in watching me work. <laughs> so I'll see you guys in the next video. Here at I Trucker out.